Okay, good morning. I am Dr. Satish Krishnan, Senior Consultant Neurosurgeon and Head of Department of Neurological Surgery at Al Qasmi Hospital, Sharjah, UAE. Once I had finished medical school, by the time I was finishing medical school, I had already made up my mind to take up surgical subspecialty. And once I had made up my mind to take up surgical subspecialty, after I did my two years of general surgery, neurosurgery followed suit. Why neurosurgery is a question that people would ask. My question is why not neurosurgery? What is unique about neurosurgery is that it gives a doctor a chance to see and handle the most unique and the most specialized of all the organs of the human body. That is the brain and the spinal cord. There is no other specialty which would give you a chance to peek into the brain and to see it live time and to try and overcome the challenges, overcome the diseases that afflict the brain and try to pull back patients from the brink of death. The satisfaction of seeing a patient walk out from your hospital when they are paralyzed, when they are unconscious and to see the smile on the faces of their relatives gives you a high that no other specialty can give you. What is challenging about the challenging about neurosurgery is, is that on a daily basis you are seeing patients who are afflicted with problems of the brain which are lethal and life-threatening. So there is no time where you are relaxed, there is no time where you have time to think. You are always on a high, you are always in demand and your work is 24 hours, 7 days, 365 days. In the last but not the least uh, fact is that the number of people doing neurosurgery, the practicing neurosurgeons are far less compared to the number of patients afflicted with neurological problems. And so the society needs more and more people to take up neurosurgery if you are going to try and save lives of people who are afflicted with severe life-threatening neurological dysfunction. If I outline as to what stroke is and the, and the enormous uh, impact of stroke on the general population uh, and the problems faced by stroke patients and the stroke caretakers, that's an immediate family or it's a nursing home or it's a caregiving institution that is going to look after stroke, it's imperative to know what a stroke looks like and what to do when a, when a stroke attacks you basically. When you're talking of heart attacks, it's very simple because there is always pain in most of those patients who get heart attack. And so you would go to the seek uh, medical attention the moment you feel a pain anywhere below your chin up to your groin because you're scared that you might die. But unfortunately, stroke does not give any positive features. Most of the stroke that is. So stroke, unlike heart attack, is of two different types, major types. One is a stroke in which there is lack of blood supply to the part of the brain, which is called the ischemic stroke, which is the stroke as we know it. And the other is the hemorrhagic stroke or when there is blood vessel rupture and there is leakage of blood into the brain. It can be into the brain parenchyma itself or it could be into the um, surface of the brain when it is called the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Fortunately for us, most of the strokes are ischemic stroke. That means there is lack of blood supply to parts of the brain which kills off the neurons and that forms about 85% of the stroke in, in general. So when you're talking in terms of intracerebral hematomas or subarachnoid hemorrhage, the hallmark would be headache and patients losing consciousness immediately or patients presenting with headache, loss of consciousness, fits or weakness of one side. That's easy to diagnose because the patient is already having a positive symptom like pain. But most of the stroke, like I said, is 85% of the strokes which are ischemic. That means lack of blood supply to the brain. If it is uh, very large, would, would be announcing its arrival on its own. That means the patient would be having a weakness of one side, not being talking, uh, having a facial deviation to one side. But by and large, most of the stroke symptoms to start with may be very trivial. That means the patient may be just not talking for, to you when you're talking and there's a flow of the speech gets arrested or may not be able to talk or you find that the patient is doing some fine objects, some fine work with the hand and the pen drops down, there is mild weakness of the hand, there is mild weakness while walking, there is unsteadiness of the gait, there is a droop of the, the angle of the mouth to one side, 
uh, there is deviation of the eyes to either side, there is clumsiness of the hand. These are the mi milder symptoms that you get when you get a stroke. And if you diagnose that you are trying to, you are going to get a stroke by taking cognizance of these, already now the second or the third most common killer um, after cardiac diseases and uh, cancer according to most of the studies. Some studies even put it as the second most common killer. But by 2020, stroke is set to overtake both these illnesses and become the number one killer. As of now, stroke is the one disease that causes the maximum morbidity. That means it gives rise to patients who are completely dependent on their caretakers for their day-to-day -day existence. So the, the amount of money that is spent on stroke survivors is the maximum in the world. But compared to the burden of stroke population, the stroke people in the world, the, the, uh, the number of organizations dealing with stroke and uh, dissipation of stroke materials to the common public are much less when compared to cardiac illnesses or to cancer. Having said that, um, the world has taken cognizance of the fact that stroke is a major killer and a major morbidity producing illness. And in the last decade in America was declared as the decade of the brain. So there, is, there has been a forward thinking on stroke but a lot more needs to be done. So we need to dissipate this information about stroke being a major killer and stroke being a major cause of morbidity to the general population. <clears throat> this can start by programs being started in the schools itself, started in, on TVs, regular TV shows which will highlight the importance of stroke, the burden of stroke onto the society, in the print media by having regular discourses, regular uh, features that are published in the print media to dissipate knowledge about stroke and how we can prevent stroke and what needs to be done for stroke. So in this program that uh, my nephew is undertaking, uh, we hope that the general population or the local population in the area where they live, more awareness for stroke is given into the schools and into the general population.